These are some of the most testing times for humans. We live in a world ravaged by disease, pestilence and extreme weather events. Today, COVID-19 may be the biggest threat to human progress and development and could change our social habits as we know them. But COVID-19 is not the only disease that is threatening us. As I speak, there is another malady called the Panama disease which is threatening our food security. As human beings, we are always most worried about diseases that affect us, the humans, especially the incurable ones. What about diseases that affect plants and diseases that threaten our food security? Panama disease is one such problem that is destroying banana plantations not just across the world but also in India. Now to put this in perspective, we need to understand that bananas are the most consumed fruit in the world. In 2017, the average per capita consumption of fruits globally was about 25 kgs and bananas contributed nearly 40% to this. An average person in India consumes around 19 kgs of banana every year. In the Philippines, it's over 21 kgs. The US Food and Drug Administration says that a medium-sized banana can provide 110 calories along with 450 milligrams or 13% of your daily potassium and 15% of your daily vitamin C requirements. The Food and Agriculture Organization also says that in countries where bananas are grown, they provide almost 25% of the daily calories in the rural areas. Therefore, this fruit is very important for our food and nutritional security. And this connection does not just end with the food. The banana plant also has a very strong social and economic relevance in communities in South and Southeast Asia. Latin America and Africa. Now let's talk about the Panama disease and why it is so deadly. Panama disease is caused by a fungus with a long and complicated name called Fusarium oxysporum FSP cubans. One of its strain which is called the tropical race 4 or TR4 is creating the maximum havoc threatening almost 80% of the global banana production. The disease is so deadly that sometimes it is referred to as banana cancer. The fungus resides below ground and infects the plants through its roots. The infection then stops water and essential nutrients from being transported to the rest of the plant. The leaves begin to wilt and the stem of the plant starts turning dark brownish before the plant dies. If one plant gets it, then most likely that an entire plantation can be wiped out. Now if that sounds scary, what is scarier is the fact that there is absolutely nothing, no medicine, no fungicide that can cure this disease. Now let me tell you a bit about the history of this disease, its genesis where it all began. Till the 1950s, there was just one banana variety called Gros Michel or the Big Mike which dominated the international banana trade. Big Mike was known for its sweet taste. But what made this banana the export favorite was its thick peel which prevented bruising of the fruit when transported over long distances. And it also grew in thick bunches again making it easier to transport. But there was one big problem and a big problem that became its Achilles heel and this was its susceptibility to the Panama disease. This disease destroyed almost all the Gros Michel or the Big Mike plantations. So much so that the banana industry had to replace the Gros Michel with another variety, a banana which was inferior in taste, less sweeter called Cavendish. Today, almost all exported bananas belong to the Cavendish variety. But after 70 years or so, the story has again repeated. And this time, the Panama disease has struck the Cavendish variety of bananas and is threatening to wipe it off the planet. First Grand Michel and now Cavendish. What makes these banana plants so vulnerable to the Panama disease? The answer lies in how they are grown. The quest of the banana industry has always been to grow beautiful and uniformly yellow bananas, bananas without those ugly black or brown spots, bananas that look good on the supermarket shelves. 
there are over a thousand edible varieties of bananas, some of which are far sweeter and nutritious than the Cavendish variety. But they are ignored by the banana industry, the supermarkets and the consumers because of excuses such as they are not attractive enough or they are hard to eat because they have seeds and so on and so forth. Now, because the Cavendish is the most traded or commercially important banana, every fruit should look and taste the same. And this could only be done if all the plants came from one mother plant. So each Cavendish banana plant is a clone of all the other Cavendish banana plants around the world. You will never find seeds in these bananas. And they are propagated only through their rootstock called rhizome or shoots called suckers. That makes them genetically identical carbon copies of one another. But this also means that they have the same amount of vulnerability to pests and diseases. That is the reason why Grand Michel went out in the first place. They were all clones of one mother plant. Cavendish was once immune to the Panama disease and that was the reason why the banana corporations lapped it up. Today, almost half of the bananas produced on the planet belongs to the Cavendish variety. But then the Panama disease mutated and now threatens to wipe out all the Cavendish banana plants. The Panama disease on Cavendish bananas was first witnessed in Indonesia and Malaysia in the early 1990s. It then spread to Southeast Asia and China. According to FAO, the disease has now spread to over 17 countries and has reached Latin America, the region from where the strain that infected Grand Michel emerged. Should India be worried about the disease? Yes, absolutely, because India is the largest producer of bananas in the world. And this disease has found its way into the country. India produces close to 30 million tons of banana every year. And what is worrisome is the fact that almost 55% of the commercial banana plantations and 65% of, of banana production in India comes from these Cavendish clones like Grand Nain, Robusta, Basrai and Srimanth. While there is still no data on the extent of damage in India, media reports suggest that banana plantations in at least four states Bihar, Gujarat, Madhya Pradesh and Uttar Pradesh have been badly affected by this disease. All these are the areas where the Cavendish variety is grown. So is the most popular fruit in the world slowly inching towards extinction? It is too early to say this, but there are lessons to be learned from this disease outbreak. Depending on one variety and depending on monoculture crops is not sustainable for our food and nutritional security. But the good news is that India also has 20 native varieties of bananas which are grown commercially. And there are many more species of bananas in the wild. Some of these may not be as good looking or seedless, but they surely pack a punch when it comes to taste and nutrition. It is time we try them.